All right, week 10, problem nine. In certain ranges of a piano keyboard, more than one string is tuned to the same note to provide extra loudness. For example, the note 110 hertz has two strings of this frequency. If one string slips from its normal tension of 600 to 575 newtons, what beat, what beat frequency is heard when the hammer strikes the two strings simultaneously? All right, so the idea here is beat frequency. Beat frequency is when, is this the difference between two frequencies? When you have the difference between two frequencies, you're going to get constructive and destructive interference. And that's going to be based on the frequency. Bam, beat frequency. So we look at images. This is a good example right here. So the idea here is you have two slightly different frequencies, and they'll gradually build up um, constructive interference, and then uh, it'll gradually die away. So you'd hear two beats here, because their frequency is probably off by, I guess, two. Assuming this is one wavelength? I don't know. So the idea is you'd hear um, uh, two beats if you have a frequency that's divided by, that has a difference of two. So just frequency beat equals one frequency minus the other frequency. Not a big deal. All right, so we have tension. So we need to find the frequency differences. So I'm gonna start by looking at the idea that velocity, I'm, I'm done with orange, back to blue. Good old blue. Everyone likes blue. I love you, blue. Velocity equals distance divided by time, which is the same as lambda times frequency. So, hmm, we also know that velocity equals tension divided by, there we go, is tension divided by um, mass per unit length. So we know that frequency equals tension divided by mu square rooted over lambda. So what I did was I just velocity over lambda. So frequency equals velocity over lambda from this guy over here. That's a terrible lambda. And I substituted in the square root of tension over mu for velocity. So we're looking for the number of beats. All right, so I'm just going to do frequency 1 minus frequency 2, which equals square root of tension over mu. Ah, so I know what ten, frequency 1 is going to be. Hmm. So maybe, so we know frequency one is gonna be 110 hertz because it hadn't slipped at all. And we know that tension on two is going to be tension, which is what, 575? I guess say 575, divided by mu, but we don't know what mu is, but we might, all right divided by lambda over one. Okay, so I'm gonna square root it. So I'm gonna break up this square root into two square root portions over, right, which equals 110 minus square root 575 over square root of mu times then we'll do the whole multiply by the reciprocal equals 110 minus square root 575 times 1 over square root of mu times lambda. All right, so I understand what I probably did there. I was like, whoa, totally crazy off the deep end. No idea where it's going on. So they told me to find beats, so I found difference of frequencies. And then I put what I did know right here and what I don't know over here. So I don't know square root of mu or lambda. I'm like, ah, okay. So I just kind of put those guys to the side. Now I'm going to try and figure those guys out. So I also know that frequency 1 equals 110 hertz, because that's the one that's um, not slipped or gone crazy. And that equals square root of 600 over lambda 
nope, over the square root of the um, mass per unit length over lambda over 1, which is the same as square root of 600 over square root of mu times 1 over lambda, lambda multiplied by the reciprocal. And so I'll have square root of 600 times 1 over square root of mu times lambda. Okay. And we know this guy over here goes 110. So this is just using what, I, what they told us about frequency 1. So when I rearrange it using this guy and these guys, I'm going to have 110 divided by square root of 600 equals 1 over square root of mu times lambda. I know it felt like magic, and it did to me too, but we're going to see if this works and gives us any sort of a reasonable answer. So this is what our beats are up here, and I'm going to plug this information into it and see if something magical happens. So F1 minus F2 equals 110 minus square root of 575 times, and then replacing this guy right there with that guy, we have 110 over square root of 600. Okay? Interesting. I'm going to simplify this a little bit. 110 minus square root of 575 over 600. Hmm. Make that 1 minus. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Hmm. Okay. Let's go with that. So, I'm going to do it. So, 110 times square root of 575 divided by 600. And we get a frequency of 107.7. So right here then, we have, I'm going to rewrite this guy, equals 110 minus 107.7, which equals uh, 2.3 beats per second. Bam. Actually, as, hmm, as convoluted as that was, it kind of worked out well. All right, so to backtrack real quick, what I should have done, instead of jumping straight ahead to the beats equation, I should have just found out the frequency of the, um, of this, of the wire that, struck, that slipped. So the way we found the frequency of the wire that slipped was we used the... Um, um, equation um, frequency equals uh, velocity over uh, wavelength. Well, for velocity, we use tension and the uh, um, mass per unit length. But we didn't know the mass per unit length or the lambda. But we did know that it was the same as the other string or wire. Does it say wire or string? It says wi uh, string. So we used the information we already knew, which was 600 newtons and 110 hertz, to find out um, the piece of data we didn't know. We, didn't, we don't actually know that data, but we do know what this quantity was, the square root of mu times um, uh, lambda, 1 over, lambda I should say wavelength. And we used that information, plugged it back into what we didn't know up here, by up here, I mean, or over here, or where, wherever. And we just did the math out. And we got an answer for the frequency that was slightly less. So as the string slipped, the frequency lowered slightly, which, which makes sense. And then we found the difference between the two, and bam, that gave us the beats per second that we were looking for. All right, that's not too bad. On to problem 10.